Here's four things to consider when you're thinking about leaving something to someone. First of all, what are you leaving and who are you leaving it to? It's really important to be specific. So if you have a will, you probably have seen that with that will, you have something called a personal property list. And that personal property list allows you to write down yourself, I want to leave my china set to my daughter, or I want to leave my car to my son. Anything like that you can put on a personal property list. What you can't do is say, I leave my house to someone or I leave my bank account to someone. It has to be personal property if you're using a personal property list. And as I said, be specific because if you have more than one car or more than one whatever, you really have to identify what it is. And let's say um, that your son doesn't want it or, you know, heaven forbid, he doesn't survive you. You can even put, well, if, you know, it doesn't go to my son, then the alternate is my daughter, for example. So being specific about the item and who gets it is really important and you can use a personal property list. Now a personal property list doesn't have all the formalities that a will has. So for a will, it has to be witnessed by two people. There has to be a notary that attests to the witnesses. Everything has to be done in the presence of each other. You know, there's so many formalities with a will, but not with a personal property list. What you do need to do though, is put it in writing. You need to sign it and you need to date it and then you put that list together with your will. So that's a really good way to make sure that your personal property goes where you want it to go. What if you want to leave your house to somebody? You can't do it how I just described on a personal property list. There are a lot of ways for you to say, hey, my house is going to go to, for example, my son and my daughter. You could say that in your will, and if you say that in your will, on your death, it will go through a probate process to your son and daughter. And again, be very specific. What if your, for example, your daughter didn't survive you? Do you want now your son to inherit the entirety of the house? Or do you prefer that maybe your daughter's children get that half that would have been your daughter's now that she's deceased it will go down to them so those are the sorts of things that you need to look you know think about um, if you have questions definitely talk to your estate planning and elder law attorney they'll help you think through all of that with a house there's another way though to direct it uh, besides your will and the way you can do that is through something called a transfer on death deed so for example you could fill out a transfer on death deed. It gets recorded in the county where your property, where your house is, and it has to be done before your death. It is revocable. So if you change your mind, you can revoke your transfer on death deed. So let's say you say, I think I want my house to go to my son and my daughter. What I want you to think about when you do a transfer on death deed is, are they going to get along with each other? Are they going to agree that, hey, yes, let's own this house together? Or is one going to say, I don't want this house, I'm going to sell it. And the other one says, but I want to buy it. And then what if there's not enough money for the other person to buy it? So while a transfer on death deed is a very easy way to transfer your house, uh, because there wouldn't be a probate involved, probate gives you uh, mechanisms for resolving issues like should we sell it how do we buy it out if you just do it by a transfer on death deed to your two children you need to ask yourself are they going to get along are they going to agree on what's going to happen to this house because if there is any dispute what's going to happen is that's going to raise a lot of problems probably a lot of hardship heartache and that's really not what you want to do so before you do a transfer on death deed Make sure that you think through those issues and of course, seek out the guidance of an estate planning and elder law attorney who can walk you through that.